Hey there everyone. This evening I thought I'd talk a little bit about kind of what am I thinking now versus where I was at 30 years ago. Now, I've been doing a series I'm calling the Jody Vision plus a couple other uh, playlists I'm building just to share about my life and, and so if you've watched all that then you should know how I got here. I came up here to Montana to live with my good buddy Rosie and since I met her we met Gary and that's how I ended up in this house with the two of them so um anyways um just for fun i did a few videos called uh my fairy godmother and my leprechaun because um you know a big part of the reason i'm friends with uh rosie is that um she's a very magical person she's been uh we've had a, a good friendship over the years based on our uh spiritual interest and the things that we like to discuss so um unfortunately my good friends have died of cancer. Um, they did live to be 80 and they seemed to live a good life, but God knows they would have lived longer if it wasn't for that. So um, I've been kind of in limbo for a bit here, never sure when I'm going to be finished. So um, last time I showed you my backyard, it was a little different. This time um, I got rid of much of the scrap metal. I've only got a tiny bit left over here and um, some stuff to sort out in the garage. This is a uh, stuff. I was going to do like a yard sale. I've tried having a couple of yard sales and uh, I still got the trusty bag. As you see, I've been out here working my self-defense. <laughs> this was just full of scrap metal. And so I got stuff out here. I was trying to sell up my yard sale. And, um, and I've gotten the garage cleared out. Like, I don't know if you can see in here, but there was a lot of scrap metal in that very back corner and um, it paid off cleaning it out. So, um, in a, in a roundabout way, uh, Gary left me his, uh, Trevor treasure chest, so it was actually, um, worth enough money to help pay my bills. Um, now, um, a couple of things I was waiting to sell, because, um, the trucks were left to me. I had to deal with those, and, um, I really liked that blue truck, but when it came down to it, I really needed the money, so, and I'm waiting to get rid of the trucks and, uh, a number of things, to, and so I'm kind of to the point where I can get up and go, but, um, I'm still kind of feeling around for work right now, because I need a little money. So what I'm thinking right now is I'm um, going back to Denver to a good friend of mine that I've known for over 25 years. Now, he's got his own place, so we don't have to deal with landlord stuff. And um, he's at a point in his life where he would really like to start working on music and art. And it's like, well, that's great because that's what i am been trying to get resettled in order to work on myself. And I thought that was nice that since we didn't mow the lawn, <laughs> that some pretty flowers came in. So, um... Yeah, I'm just kind of waiting to get out of here right now. Um, you know, and as long as I've lived here, I haven't done a whole lot to make myself at home. So I basically don't have much. So not, not much to see here, folks. So I got stuff waiting to get sorted out. And, you know, here in my room, I just got like a suitcase and a couple of bags. And uh, the only thing I really have that kind of helps make me feel at home is my good all-American rocking chair right there, right? and my little heap of stuff so i've got my music and stuff and i've been making videos talking about my visions my life this and that and you know and boy if i had a picture for everything that would be important to me um there's definitely a few things that i've left out but i was real nice and lucky to get these pictures here um so that's back 30 years ago or so in my last couple of years of high school me with my dad and then so i was talking about that magazine article with bill lieb of frontline assembly and how I was feeling that connection. So here's um, 2007. Um, so I had a chance to meet Bill Lieb a few times over the years, and that time just lucky enough to see someone I knew with his camera. So it's a strange coincidence that that same week I got to see Frontline Assembly, and the uh, following weekend I was here at the Shaolin Center testing for my second degree black belt. So I kind of had this set up in such a way that. Uh, that you kind of see the, the two major uh, communities that I belong to. So I have my music family to one side and my martial arts family to the other, you know. And so after all these years, um, I, I, I like to think I still want the same thing because when I was talking about 30 years ago when um, I picked up that magazine cover and thought, don't I know this guy from somewhere? And I was kind of making that connection. Well. That represents a very important milestone in my life, and I'm sure like many people, when they're 18, you're sitting there going, what am I going to spend my life doing? And well, 
you know, I was in high school in my last couple of years. Uh, I was in art school. I was in art class. They can strong me about going to art school and becoming an artist. But then, you know, at the same time, I felt like I was having these visionary state experiences where it was planting seeds of thought, you know, with my father having written to Bushido and them writing back and saying, you know, we'd really like to help your daughter get into the music business. Um, those people helped to plant a seed of thought. And that's where, you know, it's kind of a colorful coincidence that, um, you know, for some reason, my father contacted Bushido. Those are the guys who had a record label that signed up Frontline Assembly. So, of course, they recommended them to us. And my dad went out and started buying his music. So um, so we discovered Frontline Assembly in 1987. But like I was talking about my visions, I was uh, meeting him in 1982. Um, so these seeds of thoughts were being planted throughout my, you know, my school years there until about 12 or so, um, where I felt like, you know, this has given me the energy to to think about getting into the music business, but even then I've been kind of sluggish because, you know, the, the music I'm interested in is, it's more like underground, electronic, industrial music, and it's not as easy to pick up and learn as it is to say, let's say I want to learn to play piano or I want to play guitar. It's really easy to go out and find instructors and everything I need, but when it comes to making electronic music, it's very difficult to find the right help. And so, um, you know, when I did move to Denver, I was um, thinking I had the help I needed, and that's where, um, you know, my plans didn't go as I had hoped. So, so anyways, I look back. Um, <laughs> what did I want to do? I wanted to become an artist. I wanted to become a musician. Um, well, I never went to art school. I never got in the music business, but I did stay in the martial arts for a while. So back in those last couple of years, I was um, in Taekwondo class helping teach. And um, I was trying to become a certified instructor so that way I could actually make an income teaching martial arts. But then um, I met a new instructor named Ron Kern and that's where I'm saying, boy, if I had a picture for everything who was important, um, this does mark a very important turning point in my life um, where I'd meet somebody teaching uh, a type of Kempo Wushu system out of his house. So anyways, um, I was in art class, I'd say about 11th grade, when uh, my friend Simone and I got to know each other. So Simone came down from Montreal to live near his father, and so his father was a professional artist selling art on Duval Street down there in Key West, because that's what you do. It's an artist community, and he actually went on to be an artist as well. So, um, And we didn't stay in touch all these years, but thankfully I found him on Facebook, and we are slightly in touch. Now, um, we've lost Ron, unfortunately, but um, Ron has had a major impact on my martial arts training and some and somewhat on the direction of my life. And so, um, in meeting Simone in art class, I told him all about myself and, you know, me wanting to do music and do martial arts. And he goes, oh, really? You should meet my teacher. So, of course, when I first uh, had a chance to talk to Ron, I told him all this as well. And that, um, and that I've always had an interest in... Uh, psychic awareness and the paranormal and so he's like well that's great I could help you with all that and so I'd say this is where I found my first uh, you could say a spiritual teacher so I think that in a true sense this man was a spiritual teacher and I'd really like to do an entire video just about training with Ron so I do want to plan a series of martial arts videos sharing my martial arts life but I'm going to touch on Ron just a little bit because this is somebody who um, was a spiritual person and that um, he had time on his hands. He was in his 40s on disability and um, he was surviving cancer. And so um, he's the one to start me with the Qi Kung training. So learning about Qi Kung, I like to say learning Qi Kung is the path to universal mastery because um, that's what Taoism is about, understanding the universe. But you know, he's also a Christian minister. So he's sort of an unorthodox Christian man that, um, you know, he, he's kind of an old... Uh, I'm not going to say really old, but, you know, sort of a hippie, sort of a backwoods type of hippie, though, different than the type of community my parents would, I don't know. So I'd say, uh, like, Rosie, um, she was like a West Coast hippie. Well, he's like a backwoods hippie. <laughs> Anyways, um, so very spiritual man, willing to teach. And this is where, um, now, not to mention, um, Ron was also a musician. He was a guitar player, um, took things to the professional level, played in big bands, and, um, but his taste in music was really different than mine. He was more to the uh, the folk, country, uh, classic rock, and he didn't really care for anything that was anything like punk or much of what I listened to. But when he taught me Kempo and, we, and he um, talked to me, he always treated me with the understanding that I, you know, I'm a musician in the making. So 
um, he started to help me kind of see parallels in my life. So it's kind of um, fun to reflect back on those days where, you know, I was connecting with this music scene, you know, so I don't think, you know, Bill Lieb is the epitome of industrial music or everything I listen to, but it's just the one that I connected with. And you look at these band titles, Bushido, Frontline Assembly, you know, how did they show up to me? I thought I saw Bill Lieb at my Taekwondo class. I thought I seen him on a Navy base. I thought I had a Navy officer ask me if I'd like to join Frontline Assembly. I don't know, just weird stuff in my visions. So I may have um, some type of spirit intervention saying, hey, Jody, think about this. Hey, Jody, think about that. So, um, so that's a very colorful area of my life. And when we talk about me going into visionary state at that point, um, that's when I'm like, Whoa, I've been going into visionary state. So um, one thing we want to look at is the paranormal, the, the psychic awareness. That's been a life study for me. It's not something I have a degree in. But by coming to Montana and living with Rosie, that's where um, she contributed a lot to my, my personal education in this area. Um, Ron helped me a lot with that as well. You know, So I was able to talk to him about you know stuff like astral travel. You know, We've done some experiments. We've been able to provide confirmation that... Um, you know, some of the stuff is real. So it just really depends on where you're at. And um, maybe it's your gene pool, maybe your personal development. Not everybody is equipped for the um, the psychic awareness aspect. But um, for those of you who are, you know, that's who I'm here for, you know. So um, that's where, you know, I'm falling short in martial arts and not being able to find the right school is um, just like my music culture. Um, it's underground, psychedelic, you know, non-conventional, unorthodox, so on and so forth. Um, so is my martial arts life, and that's where um, Ron was that non-conventional, unorthodox person I needed. Now, I did end up um, at the Shaolin Center. So when I went to the Shaolin Center, I'm going to say Taekwondo was like very commercial, very orthodox, you know, more military training, more, you know, like family-friendly wear center, you know. I'm saying, you know, on my music side, you know, particularly my dad's side of music, you know, it's a psychedelic spirituality, but here at the Shellin Center, we're like kind of, you know, we want to be drug free and healthy. So there's still a very intellectual aspect to the martial arts culture. But um, I would say it's kind of like halfway between, you know, you know, being in the Taekwondo school and being at Ron's class, because, you know, the Taekwondo school has some sort of formalities and needs to be presentable to the public. Whereas, you know, at Ron's house, you know, oftentimes you'd see him standing there, nothing but his uh, boxers with a marble red in one hand and a Budweiser in the other. And by the way, uh, me and him have sat down and smoked a lot of pot together during some of our best conversations. And um, at some of those points, um, I've learned some of my best lessons in the Kempo and the physicality. And so um, not that I recommend that like you guys should do what I'm doing. But, you know, it's my, my path in life and it's been my karma. So um, and the way things are coming full circle is, um, you know, I'm still on that path. It's just been kind of delayed in the way like, you know, how come you're not making a living on any of this? Um, what I've been doing is working a lot of entry level stuff like cashier job, food handling. But um, something I've discovered, and I thought about this since I was a taxi driver back in Denver, is becoming, you know, a, a chauffeur, having my own private vehicle, having my own company. And, um, and over the past couple of years, I've worked with a couple of shuttle and ta taxi companies. And so um, I know what I need to do. If I could get that newer vehicle on the road, I could, I could get out there and, and, you know, like when you're not book and uh, you could you know you could do uber and uh, my friends in Denver doing uber um, it's just a great way to sort of make money on your own time because it's been really difficult for me to find a good job to fit in because a lot of jobs you know they have a tight schedule this and that and and it's like I don't really want to be committed to anything but art and music you know so um, so yeah I'm, I do have some ideas about starting my own business but for now I'm scrambling to find an hourly job so it's kind of disappointing that as old as I am I'm still trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to make a living, but um, anyways, um, it's kind of funny to think back in 30 years ago, I'm like, I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to be a musician, and of course it's really easy to ridicule me and say, oh, well, Jody, you say that all the time, but you ain't doing it, and if you were more determined, you'd probably have that by now, and that's like, well, yeah, that's easy to say, but you know, but I want to uh, point out those, I think, you know, I've just been... Um, just really trying to survive for a long time. Just, you know, I've really had a lot of things to struggle through. And so I like to think maybe we just have, um, I, I just have a longer creative process. Cause you know, as an artist, everything that happens in your life is gonna, um, it's gonna contribute to your creativity. So, you know, so like success, I, say, uh, you know, I didn't go to the art school. I didn't go, you know, I didn't get in the music business, whatever. Um, but by being a martial artist, I learned a lot of things that helped me in general. 
that translate back to music, back to arts, you know, and so that's where Ron was such a special teacher for me. So um, back 30 years ago, 31 years, whatever, um, training at Ron's, um, I would say a very major turning point in my life, and he'd given me a lot of the training I needed to get through some of the other martial arts. So when I was at Kung Fu, it seemed like I did okay. I got my second black, and again, um, I felt like I couldn't really become a teacher there because um, you really want to be someone who can represent, you know, Shaolin Kung Fu, and you also want to represent a clean and healthy lifestyle. I can't be, you know, partying and smoking pot or whatever, but I kind of feel like I'm um, the... All these years I've been just um, in denial that I really belong making music and art and I'm really more part of the psychedelic uh, spiritual community and um, that's where I would really like to turn my attention so as soon as I can get reorganized and resettled I would really like to seriously put together this music project and along the way I've been hoping on making um, a series of videos to share this unfoldment and um, the more I learn the more I share so um, a lot of artists are like, hey, look at me, look what I could do, da 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 And so there's that, you know, there's, you know, it's kind of fun to show a person what the human body can attain, like those guitar players that are just all over the place, you know, um, people that can do tricks on their bicycles, whatever it may be. But, um, but the way I do art, I think it's something that comes through my martial arts training. It's like, look what I can do and you can do this too. So I love to help people find their own uh, way, you know, I love to be influential to other artists so another martial artist coming to me to train I really like to help them find their own independent path um, we can learn through the traditions and we can learn through the modernists so I like to mix it up both so I love to see let's say in music you see people they're using a modern techno style but they're kind of drawn in a little bit of traditional music that goes back for thousands of years <laughs> you know stuff like that and just you know um, be open and flexible on the art so like um I've always thought I should be an art teacher, I should be a martial arts teacher, I should be teaching, I should be, you know, so also there's the teaching aspect, so I love to teach what I know. And um, well, for all these years, I feel like um, I haven't had the ability to talk. And so as you see, I've been in a growing process of learning to talk and being in front of this camera. So this is just my early start. Hopefully um, this will evolve and I'll be a better talker because I really have a lot to share. And that's why, you know, I'm trying so hard to keep moving forward is that um, that I know I have a lot to share and I really hope to share it. So anyways, um, 30 years ago and now um, I'm still the same person. I'm just bigger and more complicated. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. You have a great night and I'll talk to you next time.